the same thing like compared to like my style of music where it's like a lot of the music I listen to the bass player will be like using a pick and like playing root notes mm-hmm. and like just holding it down but will will like just be all over the place and like sometimes you get a lot of really cool like riffs or whatever out of that uh-huh and it helps us when we play as a three piece too cuz i think oh, it fills yeah, it out it totally fills it up <clears throat> but uh yeah as far like, as like recording and stuff like do you kind of have like a you're like uh like if you're making a song and you want the bass and have uh will kind of jam some stuff and it sounds dope do you kind of have like control over that in any way? yeah so typically the way we've written songs up until this point especially like after the first album is like i i tend to write songs as i record them now because i like to see the visual like in logic or any daw like i can uh. almost like make loops of like the verse chord progression and then the chorus and then the bridge and then like i'll move stuff around and look at it and then like just build on it from there and uh-huh. then once like i'm ready for the real takes i'll just like overdub everything sure so like when we have a new song i'll like make a demo and then will or bailey or whatever like i'll show them my version with like a simple bass line or like a simple like apple drum loop uh-huh. and um and then I'll be like, all right, make this cooler. <laughs> right, sure. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I'll just have them listen to it, have them, like, learn the basic chords. And then, like, if they want to write anything themselves from there, I'll do that. Gotcha. And I typically have a pretty good idea of, like, what I want the drums or the bass to be like. But I'm always, like, looking for a new, like, flavor. Because, like, there's definitely been songs where, like, Will, his brain goes somewhere else with the bass and i end up liking it more than Mm. what i wrote you know yeah so that's like it's fun to like present them songs and like see where their thought process goes from there yep you know yep yeah that's a cool way to go about it because i'm still trying to figure out like how what the best way to go about like being more collaborative and mm-hmm. figuring out like what works best yeah because all my drums have always been the the apple <laughs> drums mm-hmm. other than three songs yeah dude it's tough it's tough like to obviously just have that on hand to like record real drums but then also like with logic drums like you gotta like figure out the fills you want and mm-hmm. like chop it up and they're both hard like drums is the hardest part of recording for sure and it's like it takes the most time but um that's as close of, as i've really gotten with collaborating like we've tried like um jamming together or like writing together and it it doesn't i mean we've come come up with some cool things like there's that one song that we play live that i think you've heard and I think you pointed it out that you liked the song. It was, was like it really catchy. Was it the one catchy. that you played at the New Barons that didn't have yeah. any words yet? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I just like, yeah. I still don't have words for that song. Wow, so like yeah. whenever we play it, I just say whatever comes to mind and I just like sing it to that melody or whatever mm-hmm. that I have for it. Till this day. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> I know. We never like revisited That's it. It's funny. But uh, like that we made together. But like we haven't really like flushed out a song from like start to finish. Because it's like one thing is getting everybody in the room at the same time Mm -hmm. for the amount of time we need to like finish a song. So that's a challenge. And then like also just like coming up with something brand new on the spot. It's like it's easier when you have like this start of an idea that you can present to somebody and then like sort of pick it apart from there and like Mm -hmm. map it out, you know? Right. Especially when you're coming on the production side of things and you want it to sound like if you're trying to grab like a certain emotion and you have like certain words, you want it to sound a certain Mm -hmm. way. Yeah, I think having that like bass is definitely good. And I think we write pretty similarly as far as like processes go, Mm because that that made me think of uh, when you said that one song about the that you still don't have lyrics to. (laughs) We've had jam some songs that they did have a bass but kind of more came into like a bigger full band thing and for the life of me i can't write like lyrics to it yeah and it just it feels like it's a 
for lack of a better term, like a stepchild. Like it doesn't feel <laughs> like uh, a normal song that I like, I don't know, compared to other songs I have yeah. out. It's just, I don't feel that connected to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Writing lyrics for me is interesting. Cause like it, it always comes last. It seems like for me mm-hmm. is like, especially with this process where I'm like recording a demo of the music, like I'll finish the whole song as an instrumental and then like then i'll start like humming melodies or phrases to myself and then mm. it usually starts with like a phrase i like or like a little melody i like and then i'll try to like fill in the holes from yeah. there and like m- try to make sense of whatever i'm singing yeah because <laughs> sometimes it's just nonsense but like i don't know it's it's a really weird thing because the lyrics it's like i've never written down a song and been like i'm gonna write a song about you know sitting here right now it's mm-hmm. never like a direct concept it's always like sort of like a stream of consciousness and then like once it's done i'm like oh maybe that's what i'm talking about on yeah this. You know? like you have no idea what it's yeah what it is until like a, you step back a little bit yeah i'm not really like thinking about that i'm just mm-hmm. thinking about the way it sounds and the way it feels so you have an album coming out right <sighs> Ish, um, maybe maybe so <laughs> yeah we're i thought um, you were gonna have an album or a longer ep like dude we've been sitting on like 10 songs yeah, now for like a what, year dude jesus <laughs> man and i'm just like okay there is some things we have to finish which was mostly on me i gotta like redo some vocals redo some guitars okay. it's gotta get mixed um i'm having this one mixed by my friend ethan who's in um, the band Meadowers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ethan yeah, Radke. Yep, he's a good friend of mine. Um, so coordinating that and, like, getting together with him and, like, because mm-hmm. I like to be there, you know, like, for input and stuff like that. But um, so it's a lot of just fine-tuning at this point. But um, in before that, so, like, we've had these songs and then, like, we were finishing up the album or stream of eps or however we were going to release it i'm Mm -hmm. still not really sure yet um but we we recorded a split ep with doubter yeah yeah yeah. at uh noise together studios in saint francis and it was originally going to be like one song of ours one song of theirs and turned into two songs of ours two songs of theirs so it's like a split ep instead of like a split single sure um so we've kind of been prioritizing that and then that mixing <laughs> got like uh sort of delayed too so we're like we're okay. finishing up that now but it's nice because like between now and like may i think we have like 15 shows but we're gonna release the ep with doubter and then that'll buy us a little time and then for the rest of the year we should be like coming out with new music because it's all like basically done i just have to like touch it up and get it ready to go okay you know so you're yet to decide if you want to do an ep like separate eps rather than one big album yeah so the original plan was to do like a 12 song album or a 10 song album just because i like that number in my head and like the artist part of me wants to like present a finished like project like that but like another part of me is like, well, if we release another like four song EP like we did with Glue, it'll probably get some more ears on the album. Gets because it's mm. so much shorter and more consumable. Yeah, it's it's a lot easier to listen to nine minutes of music than thirty or forty. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And I really want people to kind of digest them all because because of how long I've taken to like make this right and it's like right. it's a little it's like a little bit of a selfish thing about me it's like oh, i want like i hope people <laughs> like it you know you want the big chunk yeah instead of the, the pieces yeah so that is a tough dilemma though i feel that you could could you do like both yeah so that was that was my alternative solution i was gonna do like a 12 song album but leading up to it i was gonna do like one four song album one four song ep a second four song ep that's eight and then come out with the album which would be 12 songs Mm. which would have those eight plus Plus. four more new ones yeah and that's like 
what I think I'm going to do, but yeah. I'm not really sure yet. Um, the, the first album too was also like eight songs. So I could just drop another eight song album too. And that would make sense in my head, mm. but I just keep going back and forth with it. Like yeah. every day, like, yeah, I just rack my brain with this stuff. And it like re- in reality, it doesn't matter that much, but like, yeah, I don't I know. I think doing the two EPs would be really solid to have like, a like uh i don't know like very consumable um music for people to listen to say like early spring mm-hmm. and then like whatever your timeline is in your head but like another yeah. few months or whatever and release the other one and then release the full complete yeah i think it'll like gain traction and people will like um kind of follow along with the story a little bit more yeah I yeah know. i think that's kind of what i'm leaning towards too cuz the songs definitely like feel cohesive. Like there's a familiar themes within the songs, so I do want them to be like next to each other. Uh-huh. So I've Crust ruled is out. on there, right? No. So, oh, okay. Uh, Crust and Decomposer were gonna be on the album, but now we're just kind of doing them as one-off singles, just because it's been so long. Okay. And also, like, I don't know. It feels that part like feels done to me because we did the two videos for it Uh um aesthetically both of the songs are pretty similar and um i don't know i think i think i'm gonna just like i'm trying to give everybody like all new music you know Mm -hmm. that they haven't heard yet because like when i a new album comes out for me like i always want to hear the new stuff because like people drop albums and it has songs that have been put out as singles and that's cool. Like I totally understand that, but like, I'm always itching to hear what's like, what haven't I heard at all? Mm -hmm. You know, fresh slate. Yeah. So that's kind of my thought process. Sick. One sec here. You can, uh, maybe talk about a show coming up or something. I just got to (laughs) put this mirror right here. So I make sure my phone doesn't die. (laughs) Yeah. Well, our uh, next show is with Doubter. We're doing that uh, February 10th at Anodyne Coffee, um, which was supposed to be the EP release uh, <laughs> show for our split. But like I said, it got delayed. So now we're just playing a show together. Oh, and we're like, gotcha. we're going to play the songs, but it'll come out later. Damn, that would have been a sick show for yeah. like to EP mm-hmm. split release. Yeah, but it's all good. So are you guys like on each other's tracks or is it just kind of conjoined together? No, they're both, um, it's like two North Warren, two Doubter separate. Gotcha. Um, Initially, we were thinking of like covering one of each other's songs. Ah. It should be really fun. (laughs) It'd be a funny third to add. Yeah, right. That'll be on the deluxe. (laughs) The deluxe split EP. Yeah. (laughs) side of the ep yeah but <laughs> yeah i don't know um we i don't know why we didn't do that i think we just like ran out of time or like i don't know yeah but, where is it right now in the the process of being done um i just sent some mixing notes to um matt and phil who matt like, and phil yeah they run those guys those um they run the studio there super nice studio Dude, holy yeah. shit <laughs> it's beautiful it's a beautiful space yeah and, I hope they do more shows there. Yeah. Was were that was that the only one with Doubter and us? I think they might have done like one before that, but that was oh, really okay. it. But um Yeah, that was a cool show. Yeah. That was packed in there. Yeah, man. It it was a, <laughs> it was a great spot. But uh I think they're like pretty busy cuz it's kind of like still their side project. Mm-hmm. Like I think they still work like full time. So that's like what they're doing when they're not working, which right. is a lot. So Hopefully they can get to a point where they can just like quit their jobs and that's it. Mm-hmm. That's like their income, you know? That'd be crazy. Yeah. That would be an ideal job for me or, you know, yeah. anybody that loves music like that, obviously. But So you want to own your own studio one day? I don't know if I want to mm-hmm. own one and like run it, but like I just want, I mean, I would just love to like work there, like work at a studio like that. I mean, if I'm not doing, like, music full-time, like, I would take that over, like, you know, my current job. Oh, yeah. you know? <laughs> but I don't know. Um, yeah. It would be cool 
uh, I feel like regardless, you'll at least have a studio of some capacity. No matter, like, I think both yeah. of us. <laughs> yeah, right. I was thinking about that too. No like, matter how old we are. Yeah, totally. I was the thinking studio, about home like, studio. Um, like even I don't know. Like it's such a grind. Like trying to like get more popular and like do this music thing full time. But like I was, I've been thinking about it recently, and it's like regardless of what happens like i'm always going to be doing this mm-hmm. you know like i'm always going to have a studio at home and like i'll always be recording music and um yeah so like that's taken some pressure off of like trying to grind so hard like because i feel like i it's hard to like have balance when you like do everything yourself and you're mm-hmm. like playing all these shows and and then you got to balance like your social life family life yeah work yeah you know but I don't know, man. It'd be nice just to be a <laughs> rock star. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I feel that if you just keep doing it, like no matter like what your timeline is, everyone's timeline is different. And if you just keep going and you don't stop, you'll eventually do it or get where you need to go. But also like what you're saying, though, once you, if you like enjoy it at the roots, mm-hmm. you really have nothing to lose. Yeah, right. And like I've tried to like, whatever quote quote unquote find balance and like oh i'm only gonna play like a show a month or like whatever but it's like dude if i don't like play music for like a week then i'm just like depressed man like this is what i do you know yeah so it's like there really is no balance like when i write music too it's like that's the imbalance that makes a cool song Mm. you know i don't know i'm just I don't know. I'm getting all cliche here, but I'm not going to quit music. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to quit. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to quit. I'm here to stay, oh, hell baby. Yeah. Hell yeah. What do you do like outside of music much? Um, well, kick it. Yeah. I mean, I work and then I hang out with the wiener dog and my girlfriend yep, and yep. Uh, <laughs> um, try to see my, my parents when I can. And uh, Are they still in Germantown? Because you're from Germantown, right? No. So my mom moved to Eagle River. Which is, okay. like, on the border of, like, the UP and Wisconsin. She's, mm-hmm. like, way up there now. Youper. Yeah. And then my dad, he still lives in Milwaukee. But So I, like, try to see him, like, once a week. Okay. Or at least, you know, I do what I can. And, um, yeah. And um, so that's, like, a balance, too. But um, where was I going with that? Um Oh yeah, what I do outside of work. <laughs> yeah, uh, outside of music. Um, yep. I just bought an Xbox. Oh hell yeah! Because <laughs> I'm okay. like trying to find shit to do that's <laughs> not music. Because like right. when I get off work, like if I have spare time, like a lot of the time I'll just like go and try to record something or like mm-hmm. listen to records. Um, so I'm like trying to find something that's like totally separate that I can just like turn my brain off. Yeah. So I bought like an Xbox for the first time in like nice. freaking <laughs> five, ten years. What version is it? It's the new one, man. It's the Xbox, Xbox X. Oh, okay. So you like you Ooh, that one's supposed to be like compatible eventually with like yeah, VR. Dude, you can right? play like skate on there and like oh, skate shit. three yeah, and yeah. like all the old games. Oh shit. Damn, yeah. okay. That's pretty fun. But you need the Xbox version of Skate? I don't know. You can buy it online. They have like a marketplace. Yeah, because like everything is online now with those video know. games, which is crazy. I'm pretty sure you can put like an old disc in and it'll work. That'd be sick. Yeah. They're coming out with a new Skate, Skate 4. Yeah, I feel like they've been talking about that. I know, they have. <laughs> <laughs> I've been getting like... Uh, I mentioned like sometimes I'll catch myself on a YouTube rabbit hole and I'll get recommended all these like skate four renditions and it's yeah. like still in the early stages, but like they have been putting out like slices of content, but um, apparently it's going to be like you're able to like run around and do like backflips and like, mm. I don't know, just super kind of like GTA skate world. Kind okay. Of thing. Yeah. Yeah, GTA is another one the world's waiting on. Oh, uh, another one? Yeah, because GTA 5 was yeah, the or, last one, right? Yeah, is it 5 or 6 or whatever it is? Yeah. That one's been out forever. But apparently the next one's going to be, like, insane. Like, the <sighs> map is going to be, like, crazy big and all that. Can't but, imagine. Because I feel like they kept doing uh, expansion packs or, like, yeah, upgrading like, the worlds or something. All the Xbox Live stuff and yeah. whatnot, but... 
I haven't re- even really had time to play since I bought it because like I've been playing it a little bit, but like not as much as I thought I'd be. What so, games like, did you get? Right now I have the new Madden and I have GTA. So nice. those are like the only games I have nice. right now. But I don't know. It's an it's a nice pastime. So just to like relax and then I actually um, at like the end of fall I bought a skateboard again. Oh shit! Um, yeah, you said that. Yeah. And I- <laughs> And it's been like... I, mean, I, I think, think I saw it, that on Twitter when I had Twitter yeah, around dude. that time. Do you still have Twitter? I dipped. I oh, dipped. you dipped? Yeah, I, yeah, dude. It wasn't good for my mental health, honestly. Dude, yeah. just hearing, just reading so much shit just pouring into the feed that like, I just yeah. felt like I needed to... Uh, I mean, I had Twitter for a while, deleted it, and then... Uh, a few people were like, you got to get back on Twitter. You got to get back on yeah. Twitter. And I did for like uh, three weeks. And then, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. were my first follower, I think. Was that? Yeah, yeah dude. Something like that. I'm scrolling on Twitter when I'm at work. I, it, yeah. The DIY scene, Twitter is fun. Because like I just follow bands. So sure. we'll, like people just like post show flyers or memes or like dumb shit. Right, right. And we'll just talk <laughs> to each other on there, which is kind of fun. But yeah, I see what you mean. Like. Twitter can be, it can make you just hate your life. Like the yeah. stuff you read. <laughs> Same with like TikTok, dude. I'm trying to like figure out how to make decent TikToks just for like. Mm. Music I feel like the ones stuff. you've been putting out have been pretty good. Yeah, I just. I mean, I don't even know how to make the little like montages people do. Like, I'm just bullshit. I'm taking yeah. old videos and like uploading it. I mean, that's all you got to do at the yeah. end of the day. But tw- with TikTok is another one that's like. I got to get off this app, dude. Oh, dude. I actually, ever since I've had TikTok, I have a rule for myself that I'll only watch the first, like, usually it's a friend, like, Jacob Slade or yours will pop up the first one, and then I literally just post and leave. Yeah. And like, post and ghost, man. Post and That's ghost, baby. Post and ghost. Yeah. <laughs> Specifically with Twitter. I feel like Instagram, I get more information for whatever reason. Yeah. And then you start getting into the the random algorithm and then i find myself just scrolling yeah. just like random videos that'll pop up and then i'm like what the fuck am i yeah. doing instagram's my favorite because it's like if you want to work on like music stuff or like talk to people you can definitely just do that and you won't mm-hmm. get too distracted but if you just want to bullshit and go on the stupid reels like right, you can go right. scrolling but go scrolling yeah <laughs> go scrolling <laughs> that's a new uh I'm going scrolling mom new term <laughs> Yeah, TikTok is a beast to figure out the like what works for you as far as making content and I think it's just random, man. I feel like so the videos that blow up, it's like it's either gotta be like something absurd that's like makes people go, What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> or it's gotta or it's gonna be like some random video that you put no effort into and it just like blows up for no reason. Yeah. Yeah, the one it's what is it, three seconds? For, uh, it takes three seconds for the average person to, to decide if they want to keep watching the video or not. Mm. So that first three seconds, you got to have something yeah. like, what the fuck? Or you just got to be consistent with it, like what Evan from Diet Light's been doing. Yeah, Jacob mm-hmm. Slade is very consistent, too. Yeah, yeah. super consistent on TikTok. He, it's, he's posting like his songs every day. Yep. The dude from uh, Quotes from Movies, too. I see his uh-huh. stuff all the time. Fucking Micah. Yeah. yeah. And it's, I mean, I think it's been effective. I just don't really have the discipline. I got to, like, get, I got to figure out a way to do that where it's like, oh, I could, like, post myself drinking a cup of coffee and listening to a North Warren song or something. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? <laughs> Which is great. I love that, Jacob. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we talk about it, too. Yeah. It's like, God, it's, it is cheesy, but no, it works, it's effective. Man. Yeah. And, it, like, who you cares, know. man? Like. That's kind of fun. Like, whatever. That is true. It's cool but at the like, end of the day, too, you don't want to be a slave to the algorithm, you know? Yeah, you don't want to like, be just... I don't want to be addicted to my phone. Like, mm-hmm. if I wasn't in a band, like, I probably wouldn't have social media. Like... That's what a lot of people have said. I, maybe Facebook to just, like, keep up with people, mm-hmm. but, like... God, it sounds nice just being yeah. unplugged off the grid. Totally, man. Like, <laughs> it's so nice, too, like... Like right now, I just have my phone. I always phone face it down, and I'm like, I try to look at it as little as possible. Like especially when I'm like interacting with people, because mm-hmm. like that's the worst feeling when you're like talking to someone and they're oh like half God. listening. Yeah, and then they say like what, and then it's like, oh, 
Yeah. You know? <laughs> I feel like you got to have a social awareness to that. Yeah. Like every time I'm in company with someone and I'm like texting somebody real quick, I always have to like make an effort to be like, uh, yeah, I'm just like texting my mom quick. Just like one second. And then, yeah. And then I'm like locked in. Yeah. And, right. I don't know. I've become more like conscious of that because I've definitely caught myself doing it. So it's like, what? What? <laughs> busy. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Sorry, I can't uh, take your your call right now. I'm I'm texting. <laughs> yeah, I'm on TikTok. This, yeah. this TikTok is really funny. <laughs> oh uh, man. shit, dude. Yeah, uh, my big ones are Facebook. I mean, Facebook rarely. I'll just post it for the old people that are still on <laughs> yeah. there. But TikTok, mom and dad, Facebook. Yeah, my grandma, dude. Uh, your YouTube. Fan. Yeah, she always comments on our Facebook stuff and. Yeah, it's so funny. <laughs> Boomers using technology. <laughs> That's kind of cute and adorable in a way. It is. You get some of those old people that just like type in all caps for no ah, reason. Oh my god. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. It's for their eyesight. They probably can't see. <laughs> yeah. They just think it's a bigger text size. <laughs> yeah, right. It is though. I've always yeah. I was thinking about that the other day. Cause I know Tyler, the creator, will always like mm. write in all caps. Yeah. Does he do that when he's texting his his friends? <laughs> I feel like that's just how he talks. You know. Yeah, so yeah, it makes yeah. sense. Like I'm on my way. <laughs> like what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I guess. He just the yell talks. Too. Yeah. That's just. Him. <laughs> that's funny though. Trash yeah. too. He he's in all caps all the time, but it like feels normal to me. That is it's true. Trash. Yeah. So like some people can pull it off. Totally. You know. I've thought about it before. <laughs> like I'm not that kind of person. I can't yeah. pull it off. <laughs> yeah. Me either. I'm too mellow. I'll do it a few times just for like certain things, but mm-hmm. yeah, I could do every single thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Going yeah, back man. to uh, GTA. <laughs> do you uh do the missions or are you kind of more of a free roamer i've been normally like when i play with people or like i go to a friend's house well, i'm a free roamer but um i've been doing the missions i've nice. been trying to get my my bread <laughs> up so i can buy like some cool cars and stuff is that the one with like michael and yeah michael and um what are trevor doing? trevor and um so with a t oh no that was a t uh, uh what's his name um, Who's Trevor? Is Trevor the black dude? No, Trevor's like the white trash, like trailer trash dude. Okay, what's the Oh, Franklin. Franklin. Yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, man. I'm only like 15% through the game, but it's fun. Like, uh-huh. I don't know. Sometimes when I'm really chilling, I'll just like watch the story. You know? <laughs> like, Which story? Like the story that plays like in between oh, missions. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll just be like, word. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a TV show in a way. Yeah, right. Series. It is really, though, like a like you are in control of the storyline. Yeah. Which is kind of interesting. Yeah. I actually was, um, I started doing GTA 5, like, right when COVID hit. And I had my PS3 in GTA 5. And I was getting, like, really, really into it. Probably, like, in a bad way. And <laughs> I, um... All of a sudden, the CD, like, every time I put it in and it was just about to play, it just froze. Oh, shit. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> Not <laughs> my game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I took it as a sign that I wasn't meant to um, be invested in GTA Five That's fair. at the time. That's be a little fair. bit more productive for myself. But yeah. It is so fun, dude. It can suck, suck the <laughs> life out of you, dude. You'll look up and it'll be like, I've been playing this for four hours. Oh, That's not yeah. okay. Especially, dude, in like middle school, I had an Xbox 360 mm. and Halo 3 on oh, Xbox sure. Live, man. That's like the golden age of video games. Yeah. Like I, was, I was in that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Invested. Yeah. I was a PS3 kid. Yeah. So. Never had Halo or really played it much. Mm. Yeah, Halo 3 specifically. I don't really care about the other ones, but it was always like the standard, like Halo, COD, GTA. Yeah. You know? Right. Like Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Yeah. Goddamn. Black Ops. I was more of a Black Ops kid because that's right when I got into it. The original Black (laughs) Ops, man. That was fun. Yeah. That was was like the first, uh, or the second technically, but... Um, Nazi Zombies was in that one. Mm-hmm. When was it in the first one? 
I don't remember. I forget. But ba- Black Ops one, two, and then three is that the one that it started getting like really futuristic? I think so. Whatever the, what that one was, I did I not really, like that one. Yeah, I didn't really play one three, and two, two specifically. Yeah, it's so fun, <laughs> so fun. Yeah, man. Pretty sure one of those was like the one where you can. Um, was it like with Vietnam and JFK? Yeah, that was like, the first yeah, one. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Get nostalgia, dude. That was the that oh was the storyline. That's the one I would watch. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, with Reznov, yeah. bro. <laughs> At the end, no spoilers, but holy shit. Yeah, man. That, that was the end. shit. Oh my god. <laughs> Jason, the numbers, <laughs> the numbers, Jason. Oh, dude. Yeah, yeah I really love uh like old World War Two, World War One, mm-hmm. like kind of history. I was watching this documentary last night too. Yeah, I should have said that, that when when you asked me what I do outside of music, man. Like I'm a, I like watch war documentaries. What, dude? Like, all Fucking the sick. time, dude. All the time. When I lived alone before I moved in with my girlfriend and. Uh, August, like I would like fall asleep to a different war documentary. Oh my god! Every dude. night, like I'd watch them like every night, and I got to the point where I'm like watching shit about like the Revolutionary War. <laughs> like I ran out of World War Two and like sure. Vietnam stuff. So like, I'm, oh wait, yeah, I'm like really fascinated with history. Weirdly uh. enough, but yeah, I haven't I haven't um, watched many recently. But I just got into watching like old like spaghetti westerns. Mm. Like John Wayne and Clint Eastwood and sure. like all those old westerns and that's been fun because like I've been watching those and then I've also been going down like a rabbit hole of like old country mm. for like listening to music and it's just all like that's kind of like what I'm into right now as far as Got you. that Yo. goes. But uh, who are some like old country artists? Man, um, some of my favorites are like. John Prine, Tons Van Zant. I've heard of John Prine before. Um, I mean, early Dylan. I love Bob Dylan. Mm. He's not necessarily like full on country, but um, know you know Jane, Johnny yeah. Cash, Sturgill oh, sure, Simpson. Right. Um, and there's a couple new ones. Like um, there's like a scene sort of blowing up in um, the South, like New Orleans area and stuff. With uh, have you ever heard of Nick Shoulders? He's like a um, Nick Shoulders. Mm. He's he's cool. He kind of yodels like Hank Williams oh, or something. Oh shit, dude! Yeah, Fuck. He's got a bunch That's of like sick. tats and like a mullet and like I think he originally wanted to be in like a metal band, but he's like this is more sustainable. Wow! And he just became this like beautiful country singer. Wow! And then there's a uh, my favorite is Chris Acker. Um, okay. He, he's this country guy. I think he's from new orleans but um he's got some really good stuff uh good kid is my favorite album by him and then there's like willie carlisle and duff thompson there's a ton of stuff what's that one kid's name who was like the yodeler the little kid at the walmart oh, yeah, the walmart yodel. <laughs> <laughs> whatever happened to yeah, him? i have no idea I oh hope, maybe we should look it up i hope he's doing <laughs> well he must be a little bit older now. He Shit. better be on tour right now. <sighs> What's his name? Walmart Yodel. Let's <laughs> hear his name. Mason Ramsey. Hey. Hi, I'm Mason Ramsey. <laughs> oh my God. There dude. he is. <laughs> what a wait, legend. Wait, let's just watch his. Uh... I honestly kind of forget. Oh gosh. <laughs> I actually just set up my Shopify today so I can sell stuff online. Hey, I've been meaning to do that. Is this kind of what that? Yeah, dude. A little bit? Yeah. <laughs> so he started it? <laughs> yeah, man. He's an inspiration. Yeah. That lady in the back is just like, holy shit. (laughs) (laughs) Just the fact that he uh, did it in the Walmart. (laughs) It's just so funny. He's just in a Walmart. It's such a random setting. (laughs) What the fuck? He should have. This was before uh, TikTok. He could have just made a TikTok video and blown up. Mason Ramsey. Working at a pizza in a soap shop. What? No. 
He's dude. now 15 and still pursuing his music career while being a totally normal teen. Good yeah. for him. Yeah. That's good. That's good. He doesn't want to be a, a child yeah, star. Yeah, seriously. I remember he was doing like tours around America to like Walmart parking lots. Are you serious? Yeah, my cousin saw him in like Kentucky. No fucking <laughs> yeah. way. So crazy. Wow. Good for him though. Yeah, seriously. Escaping childhood stardom because yeah. that shit will fuck you up. <laughs> Bad. Yeah, man. Well, that's cool. Um, I was thinking, what makes a Western, a spaghetti Western? What's what spaghetti have to do with it? Um, I think somebody else could probably give you a better answer <laughs> than me, but I think it's just like if they're really cheesy. Oh, okay, kind of stringy. Yeah, spaghetti western. <laughs> what makes a western spaghetti? Yeah, I guess it would be like there it is, a movie about. The American Old West, made okay. cheaply in Europe. Typically by an Italian producer and director. Okay. Interesting. Oh, that would make sense. Yeah. So they were made in Europe mm-hmm. because of the landscape? Yeah, probably. Maybe. Or they just really liked the American cult- culture, I guess. Uh, location um, of their filming. Low budget film produced by Italian directors. Oh, interesting. Okay. Oh. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen any good movies lately other than uh mm, That's a good question. Dude, have you seen uh that one uh, All is Quiet on the Western Front? I started watching it. Bro. I started watching it at a hotel in Georgia. <laughs> wow. <laughs> when I was on work trip. Work trip and uh I fell asleep like halfway through it. Oh, dude. You know there's an original to that. Yeah, like yeah. really, really old, mm-hmm. and like black and white almost. Yeah, so I like watched the first half of the new one, fell asleep, didn't finish it, and then did the exact same thing for the ah. original because I was like, oh, I'll just watch the original first and come back. Oh my god! <laughs> then I didn't finish it, and I'm like, damn it, I ca- I gotta do it. I gotta check it out. It's good. Yeah, dude, it's good. Yeah, I was but, just thinking, like, I'm I never really loved the originals of movies, like the original uh, Great Gatsby. And yeah, just, they're just so boring. That's true. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I I don't know. I need to work on my appreciation for older films, <laughs> dude. My attention span just getting that's fair, man. In. That's fair. But the new one, man. Yeah, if you saw half of it, I think you might get the gist of it. But yeah, it's just a dark fucking movie. Yeah, but I love that war stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's like it's weirdly fascinating to watch. I feel like you know, like all that war stuff. It's like, why do we like watching this? Yeah, right. <laughs> but it's it. I don't know. I feel like it kind of gives you like an appreciation in a way. You're like, it's like, <sighs> you know, that shit's crazy. Like, like that could be me. Yeah, I'm just I'm just sitting here in my my uh, furnished house with, <laughs> with heat and snacking on some chips right. or something it's like, i don't know man i don't know why we I don't like, got problems compared to those people yeah just fascinating we do but just a different world yeah um i think it's interesting the perspective of uh like just putting yourself in those people's shoes and uh just thinking about the era that these people lived in mm-hmm. um and then, like, these people were, like, 17, 18, maybe even younger kids yeah. who had no idea what they were getting themselves into, mm-hmm. especially, like, Vietnam and yeah, man. World War Two. I mean, my grandpa was, uh, he lied about his age to get sure. in the war. Holy shit, dude. Yeah. Which war? Uh, World War Two. Whoa. Yeah, man. He that He's on the cover of Glue. Uh, that oh, sure. old okay, photograph. Yeah. That's yep. my, my grandpa when he was, like, I don't know how old, 16 or something. Okay. But that was before he... He lied about his age to get in the war. And Is he uh, raised in Wisconsin? Uh, yeah. He was born gotcha. in Milwaukee, I believe. Holy and, shit. Um, Where did he uh, go in World War II? I'm not Deployed. sure. He passed away when I was pretty young, like 10 or 12, so I didn't really gotcha. have an opportunity for him to like give me any details. Mm. But I know he was a drill sergeant, too, in Korea after That's World War Two, so... He was he was in the military for quite a while and he was like a big big dude like even mm. even like as a seventy or eighty year old man he was like 
super tall and big and like that was when he was like shriveled up and old you know but uh yeah he was a cool guy he was a scary dude back in the day yeah man (laughs) i think i think he was i gotta i talked to my my dad about it (laughs) i think he could be like uh he he was a tough guy he was an intimidating boy right there (laughs) he was also a cab driver in new york in like the 50s what the fuck yeah so he's like he saw it all he was born in 1926 and it's like damn wow it's almost 100 years ago now you know yeah dude that's that's my grandpa. That's not even Jesus, a great grandpa. Right. right. I don't even know. I think we're getting close to like no more World War II veterans being alive. Yeah, they're all like a hundred now. It's just nuts. Yeah, man. Whew. That's that's wild. It's a weird thought to think about. Mm-hmm. Um, my grandpa was uh, in the Philippines as a kid. Uh, he's no longer around, but he um, when he was probably. A, teenage 16 15 years old mm-hmm. um he remembers seeing like uh two fighter pilots or like a dog fight basically right above he grew up in manila yeah and uh they were under japanese control for quite some time during the war and he remembers seeing uh i'm pretty sure he said it was a u.s and japanese uh dog fight just like right above and like it's like what the fuck yeah man it's such a short amount of time ago all this scary stuff was happening. Yeah. Like, man. So did he come to America? Yeah. With your grandma? Or did yep. the, did she meet? She So he was a immigrant. He went to uh, college in the Philippines, and he was going to be a brain surgeon in America, wow. but uh, they didn't have any positions open for him, so... Mm-hmm there was something that opened up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin to be an anesthesiologist. And he's um, like, I'll do it. And so he, him and my Lola, they uh, flew out in like the 70s or something like that. And um, um, my mom has four sisters. They were all born in the Philippines. She's the youngest and she was the only sister born in the States. Mm. So my Lola flew first and uh, was with this brand new baby, Yvonne, I guess, and um, basically the four sisters had come over like three or two years after that my mom was born. So she thought she was an only child for like the first few years of her life, and then they all came over, and then they lived in Brookfield, and um, yeah, I guess uh, we're there, have been in Wisconsin ever since. That's cool. Was that your... Your dad's parents or your mom's parents? My mom's parents, okay. yeah. That's cool. And my dad's like uh, just Wisconsin farmer. Nice. Up, like up north, Shawano. Okay, yeah. Shawano, Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah. <there. laughs> yeah, I'm just a mutt. I'm like Hungarian and German and Irish, uh, Polish. Like wow, I am a little bit of everything. <laughs> I'm European. European. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are your, uh, was your, were your grandparents immigrants? That you know of, or were their um, grandparents? I think my great grandparents were um, were immigrants. I guess we're all immigrants in some capacity. Yeah, eventually you were an immigrant. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Um, but yeah, I think I think they came like right before World War One. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm not sure Jesus though. Jesus Christ! I gotta do like an ancestry dot com thing. Yeah, right. That'd Do uh cool. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Send my blood sample in yep. or whatever. Yep. We uh got my grandparents those for um Christmas this year and my grandma is kinda she's a character, but she was just like she basically, long story short, re- is refusing to do it just because she's oh, yeah. she's older and she's kind of in her ways. She's hesitant. She, she doesn't <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't want to see anything she doesn't want to see. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Dude, you know what's wild? Um, so that the photo on the glue EP I was talking about that yeah. had my grandpa on there. Um, this happened like a month or two ago, but um, somebody DM'd me on Instagram. It was like this antique shop from like West Virginia with like a couple hundred followers. And they're like, is that Joyce Espris? And I'm like, what? Yeah. Who, who are you? <laughs> And then uh, she's like, do you know the other names in the photos? And I'm like, well, I know uh, Joseph, who's my grandpa, and then that's Joyce. Or 
maybe it wasn't Joyce. It was somebody else she recognized, and I confirmed it with my dad. And apparently it was this um, lady from West Virginia who has, like, a family and stuff. But he was, like, she was the like the granddaughter of my grandpa's brother or something. And he was like this long lost, like second or third cousin I have. What? And she recognized the photo off of like Instagram. Off the album? Yeah. What, dude? <laughs> Gotta pull that up right now. Yeah, man. Because that's not like a super duper clear photo, right? No, it's just like a black and white photo of this family. And I don't know how, like, I don't know how she recognized her too, cause like, she's long gone. Like that's a old photo. Like yeah, she doesn't what, know dude? her personally. Yeah, so that's that's like the banner. Is this uh, the album too with the North Warren on there, or is the yeah? Uh, if you go to the EP, it should just have the photograph on it. Okay, but. Yeah, the freaking marching band comes up. Yeah. I can't have like my Instagram handle North Warren because it's like some marching oh, band. Oh, North Warren, yeah. Okay. Yeah, dude. Happy. Were you in marching band, Luke? <laughs> I gotta, I gotta uh, sue that high school and be like, hey. Oh, I uh, there it is. Yeah, the middle one. Or if you. Wait, oh yeah. Yeah, there you go. Oh wow. Yeah, so that one's my grandpa wow and um is yeah she, so she apparently what? recognized somebody in the photo and she's like oh is that an esperus and i was like yeah who are you what dude that's crazy <laughs> yeah. how did she find it in the first place that's my question i don't know she i think she said she like just saw it somehow oh, on dude, instagram that's crazy yeah. so she has your family just not been in touch with this lady yeah, I I mm. think um, long lost. Yeah, so holy shit, dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. Crazy. I think my grandpa oh my had like a falling out, or like he just didn't talk to his other brother a lot. So like uh-huh. my s- side of the family wasn't close with like his extended family. Like, gotcha. All that. So like we never really kept in touch. And uh, lo and behold, I have more family members so than I thought. That's your dad. That's my or grandpa, grandfather. Yep, that's his brother. I th- I'm not sure. Okay. I don't really know anybody else. Um, in the photo, I think my dad knows who she is. That might be my grandma. I'm not sure. Gotcha. Interesting. I'd have to check in with that Any, again. Uh, I forget specific reason why you wanted to choose this picture as that um, cover. Well, my dad sent me the photograph that he just found. And I thought it was really cool. And I just love, like, the way they're, like, all postured. and Yeah. Just, I don't know. It just looks nice. And I was going to name the EP Glue. And I think it ties in with, like, some of the sentiments on, sentiments on the songs. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I always described it as, like, I'm talking about the things that kind of glue me back together. Sure. One of them being, like, family. And I think, I don't know. It just felt right and looked cool. And, yeah. You know. Yeah. Super sick. Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's the show we got here? That's an old uh, uh, Linemans. Yeah. You just played Linemans, didn't you? With uh, we did. Nile Club? Yep. How and was that? That was a good turnout, man. Cool. It was cool, a lot cool. of fun. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. That was for their EP release? Yeah. Or their album, album release. release. Album yeah. release yeah. They had a cello player, man. That was sick. Oh, shit. Dude. Yeah. What? Th- they're crazy, dude. They're was it someone that's normally in the band? I don't know. On the cello? I okay. don't remember seeing a cello player uh, before that because I've seen them before, but yeah. um, it was it was really cool. And I love oh. all their arrangements. They're they have like really unique and interesting stuff to listen to. You yeah. Know? But um, that was a good show. Yeah, they played. We played um, Shuby, and then um, what was the last band? Riot Nine had to drop. Um, and then I can't think of the last band. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll get, get that too. It's like, yeah, for the life of me, yeah. <laughs> can I remember all well, the names on the, on the bill? Whoever it is can yell at me in the comments. Sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll yell nice and loud at Luke. 
You're like, hey, bitch. <laughs> it was us. <laughs> yeah, dude. What the fuck? I love Lindemans. Dude, that's a it's that's one a of my favorite band. spots. Seriously, one of my favorite dude. like bars in Milwaukee to play at. Yep. Because you got the, the nice downstairs green room, yeah. too, if you want to escape. But mm-hmm. then also it's just Jim is the nicest, coolest dude. Dude, yeah, he's he's the, the goat. best. The goat. <laughs> yeah, man. And then, uh, yeah, it's just like a good-sized room, too, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, it was a really good turnout. I don't know what their cap is there. I think it's like 200. Mm. But it was, it was a pretty full room, and... Um, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. We had our, um, that was our first show of the year. So we had Evan from Diet Light filling in on drums. Yeah, shit. Yeah. And then was our. It, was, did uh, Bailey not be able to make it or? No, he had something going on. Okay. And then our second show of the year was at uh, Club Garibaldi. Oh, dude. How is that place? That was fun, man. It's a cool room. It yeah, feels wasn't like that through Cactus Club? It was supposed to be a Cactus Club and then they were double booked. Oh, so, uh, gotcha. so they, they, they were kind of hosting it. I guess. Yeah, I guess there was somebody from Cactus running the door. Oh, okay. And then, gotcha. Yeah, it was. I think it was their mistake because they double booked, so they moved it across the gotcha. street. Gotcha. But that was fun. It was a cool room. Um, there's Dan from Rushmore Records. I think he does the booking there. He, I've okay. been going to his record store in Bayview for the longest time. So gotcha. it was cool. We finally got they to got see us cool, play. Like a space in there. Mm-hmm. It feels like you're at the rave or something. Like really? Oh the, shit. The venue, it's it's really strange. It's got like this old like architecture on the walls and ceilings and it feels like a like a hidden bar in the rave or something. That's the way I feel. Because you can see that main room like outside on that street. Because I pass by it when we do gigs at Cactus Club. I'm like, yeah. oh, it's like, oh, that's interesting in there. And usually there's like a event or like mm-hmm. wedding or something going on. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good show. We opened up for this band for from Georgia um, called Monsoon. Very cool. They they're like a two piece. Okay. But they had like this giant speaker rig that was like ten feet tall, and then they like played like bass tracks through it. Oh so shit! It was like a mechanical <laughs> bass player, and they just yeah. mic'd the speaker. It was sick. And then attached oh to that speaker God. thing, they had like a whole light show. Wow. And it was like planned out to the song. Like it wasn't just random. That was fucking cool. Yeah. It was really fun. Shuby was on that bill too. And then, um, yeah, that was our second show of the year. And yeah. then I had uh, Blake from Doubter filling in on drums. Oh my God, dude. So he's just been busy or? Yeah. I think he had, I think it was like his girlfriend's birthday or something. Sure, he, couldn't, yeah. he couldn't be there, but. That's fair. At least you have people to fill in. Yeah. it's it, That's been really nice. And our uh, our third show of the year is with Bailey. So Nice. <laughs> our three different shows, three different drummers. And that's the one with Doubter at Anodyne. Yeah. So that's been like really fun Very though. Soon. Like you definitely get like a different feel with different drummers oh, totally you know i don't know how many you've played with but like Quite there's a, a distinctive difference uh-huh. you know like evan is a really like bouncy drummer like he, ah. he like i mean because he's so locked into like the diet light groove totally. like they're just playing off each other yeah so well so like that was a different feeling especially like catering to our music it was like a fun uh-huh. like change of pace and then blake is just like a technical god like he his fills mm. and stuff are so cool and creative and then yep like they're all different so it's been like really fun actually unfortunate that bailey can't play all the shows but right. like fun that you get to kind of like play with some new people oh yeah you know definitely yeah i played with uh well my buddy duane has done some shows with me before he's a drummer mm-hmm. um that was like way back in like 2019 recently did with um uh, show with aiden last mm-hmm. summer from bug moment and uh sometimes i'll jam with jacob slade on the drums too and like jacob is like very like i can i feel like i would love to like just jam more with jacob on drums because i can like really i think we can like kind of sense like each other like where we're kind of going yeah your ties pretty and stuff yeah kai's pretty technical and like Mm-hmm. hard hitting whereas jacob's more like loose and like flavor sure well kai has his own flavor in different ways but like yeah it's more like swung and like yeah you know kind of more can like get into it sure groove i guess i don't know yeah I explain it but i have point. um 
a small bit of news that I won't say anything about other than I am now a drummer for a band. Oh, no way. Yeah, that is <laughs> yet to um, yet to do anything. <laughs> Shit. Uh, but yeah, we're getting together. It's uh, it's going to be really fun. Like a new band? Yeah. Oh, no way. Yeah, it's oh, like a dude, brand new what? band. And it's oh, got that's some sick. familiar faces in the, in the lineup. It's going to hey, be a lot okay. of fun. Hey, okay. Shit, dude. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, really excited about that. When are um, you guys announcing anything? Probably like when we start practicing and like, okay, we got to like get some stuff together. But, Interesting. But we're all like very excited about it. So oh shit. It's going to happen. And, um, you're a drummer. Yeah. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, kind of like I can hold beats and I can like play different grooves and yeah. stuff. But like, as far as like technically speaking, no. And like, I've never like played, um, drums and for like anybody really uh-huh. um but i think it'll be something new it'll be simple enough so where i can like kind of pick up you know we'll see, have to see how it goes i might be getting cocky but I we'll have see some guests or guesses in my head but yeah i'm not gonna say them okay we can talk about it after okay. that unless you want me to say them. i don't know i, don't I know, know i know not info I'm i know to give yeah up. sure <laughs> i know nothing about it but i just want to guess yeah um is Max from Diet Light involved? No. I was not say, I was nope. saying nothing. Okay, I won't say. <laughs> that was the first person right. that came to my mind because I know he's doing like a lot of solo, his, yeah. his more solo stuff. I am supposed to play with him though. I, we've, we've been planning and to get together for the longest time. And yeah. It, that sort of thing happened where it's like, oh, forgot or I'm busy. And like it happened a couple of times, but we're definitely going to get together at some point. Mm-hmm. He's, he's been getting serious about that too. Like he's been oh, playing sure. a lot more like solo stuff, which yep. is really exciting. Yeah. I still got to go see like a solo show of his. Yeah, dude. I saw him at a, well, just a Bremen open mic and yeah. dude, man, he's cool. good. Yeah, he's man. so good. Yeah. He's in the same vein of me too. Like me and him can go on and on about Bob Dylan. And oh, like I know. Yeah. Some totally, of our old influences totally. and stuff, man. He loves that stuff. Yeah, just doing like more of a solo thing. It really emphasizes the songwriting totally. aspect of it. So I know yeah. he's got a, 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 a Nick for that. Mm-hmm. That's cool plays harmonica too yeah dude i remember like yeah. the first time i saw max online like on instagram i was like oh who's this dude he's like <laughs> on he had a video of himself with, like the hat and he's like doing the whole bob dylan thing with yeah. harmonica i'm like who is this guy <laughs> uh, lo and behold <laughs> i got a i got a, a harmonica recently actually i got like c d e f and g because oh, they're all in different keys yep. i didn't know that but now i got to get the the clamp so i can actually like play and sing yeah, at the same dude. time be fun to mess around with yeah totally i only have um i don't even know what key it's in but i got it at a gift shop in nashville yeah <laughs> so that was yeah it's like a plastic one mm. i had one for the longest time and i didn't know what key it's in uh-huh and then i like i think i just threw it out because of that i'm like i don't know what i'm doing with this it's a no key yeah but they're like they're all they're so cheap. I got like five of them for like 20 bucks. Seriously? Yeah. Shit. Like metal ones? I don't know. I think they're like, yeah, they're like okay. metal and plastic, but like sure. get the job done. Yeah. yeah. I know nothing about harmonicas. That's cool. Neither do I. Interesting. Oh, that'd be sick. Yeah, man. They're fun to mess around with. Like doing a, a song slash set with a harmonica and also like some whistling, maybe yeah. some yodeling. Yeah, right? <laughs> really sets you apart. That'd be <laughs> sweet. I got to replace like the new North Warren music with some yodeling. <laughs> like, <laughs> Dude, I don't even know where to start with you. You got to get that falsetto. Your like voice crack. Everything. Everything's a bummer. Yeah. Um, that country country slang yeah man you guys uh booking in the summer now too at all a little bit so um we're pretty booked up until may okay and then i just hit you up about um we're doing in the beginning of june we're going to nashville and cleveland yeah dude that's right so yeah that'd be sick man (laughs) yeah we did find a band okay um milwaukee band to join us so which band scam no way, yeah. sure, yeah. sure. So, uh, oh, dude, 
Dude. We're going to be playing with them, which would be super fun. Nice. Um, I think we're on a couple more bills with them throughout the year, which is cool. Because I haven't, like, I met um, Charlie very briefly. I think it was here, actually. Sure. Yeah. But I haven't really talked to them. And, but the new album and mm-hmm. um, they're sick. I love their music and yeah. all that. I'm excited Dude, to play with them. Their live shows are fucking nuts, man. Yeah. And it's not, like, not even the the fact that it's they played like the the sold out collectivo backroom and the energy there i think just them alone as performers like yeah. take away the crowd just so fucking good together yeah they like, have that I presence to watch them, them forever That's just awesome. like chatty on the base just each person is such an individual it's so sweet that's awesome so yeah. sweet yeah so they're that's all of our plans up until june so we're playing with them cool nashville and cleveland and nice. we're still working out the logistics of that but we got one venue on a hold and we're like scouting bands gotcha. for, for those cities but it's definitely going to happen nice i think any certain reason other than just wanting to check out um so i hit up kevin from mike one yeah, park yeah, yeah yeah and um he's always so helpful man he's yeah he's such a good dude i met him at uh scams backroom show oh he's yeah so nice i still gotta meet him dude. he's so nice yeah i think he's like from cleveland or cincinnati or yeah something. so that's kind of how it came about actually is because i hit him up out of the blue and i was like could you do me a favor and help me figure out a show out in cleveland yeah you know because i have no connections out there we haven't played in ohio um and then he was like, yeah, totally. And like within like minutes, he had like some bands, some venues, nice. like giving me options. Nice. And then um, I don't know how the Nashville came, the Nashville idea came to be. Is Nashville close to Cleveland? Ish, I think. I mean, it's still like hours away, but okay. like he was talking about doing a weekender. So I think he wanted to do like Milwaukee and Cleveland, but I was like, I don't want to like. Kevin? Yeah. Okay. I don't want to play in Milwaukee like too much. You know, we're trying to like get yeah. out of the state a little more if we could. So like I suggested like, what if we go to a different city like Nashville mm-hmm. and like did Nashville first and then on our way back on Saturday night did Cleveland and we're home by Sunday. Mm-hmm. You know, all I got to do is like free up my that Friday and hopefully we should be good. But um, yeah, so there was no really. There was no real like reason at all. I just kind of wanted to set up a show out of state, and I'm like, you know, whatever. Like, yeah, only taking one day off too. Yeah, that's right, right. And like, I think yeah, that's just kind of the move. Like, do some weekenders Dude, and like no. get out of town when you can. Especially after we're trying to book that one, it's just like it's so tough yeah. to book a tour tour. If right you can't now. like, <laughs> if you can't like have that be your full-time job like if you have a career like because we kind of have like full-time jobs like you know what i mean like it's hard to just like Mm -hmm. take off a week or two miss pay and then like plan a whole tour Mm -hmm. and like there's so much that goes into it it's intimidating but like i don't want to use like all my pto for i mean i would i would if i had to but same here with everyone else too it's yeah, but I feel like playing, like like you said, like out of state on the weekends or just doing like mm-hmm. little runs like that, it gets your like foot in the door of these places and it's like maybe down the line in like a, a year or two, like you'll have more options to mm-hmm. book a longer tour. Yeah. But like at least right now, at least you're like going somewhere now, mm-hmm. you know. Getting it doesn't out. have to be a week, you know. Totally. I think my goal right now for like next fall or like 2023 into 24 is to try to like um i'm just trying to manifest it i don't know if i can like maybe just by putting it out there more but just being like the b they're like opening act to like a touring band and yeah so where the tour is already set there's going to be like people already coming to see the headliner maybe Mm -hmm. you um yeah that's a big one for us like we played i mean that our biggest show up to this point was probably that backroom show that we played with yeah. you and that was such a fun show and it was sold out and everything. But I remember the first time you played the backroom sold out, you said somewhere, you're like, where do I go from here? Like, you know what I mean? Like mm. 
what's the next step after that? Cause that's like, that's when you know you're like making some progress in the local scene at least. So yeah. like a big goal for us now is to like, hopefully try to like open up for a bigger band or something, mm-hmm. you know, hopefully, you know, they reach out like local or the touring bands do or, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. Um, so yeah, I, I would love to open for like a semi like big band that yeah. is headlining, you know, what you could do too is what I tell people like when you, if you look at like a uh, collectivo backroom or cactus club, like they're, upcoming acts Mm -hmm. you could even like reach out to cactus or the artist directly and be like hey like i'm a local milwaukee artist like our draw is this and i'd love to open up for you you know yeah yeah i've done that a few times um probably pretty inefficiently because i was kind of just like hitting them up through like twitter like you know i gotta do it in a little more of like a professional manner (laughs) probably do you have uh, a epk kit at all no, what's that? So basically like a big like one sheet of like, I know Diet Light has one and I was kind of working with Bridger on mine, but basically a one sheet just kind of saying like your discography of what you have and then like venues you've played with, who you've played oh. with, and then bio think, pictures and then like some article write-ups and that's... Yeah, I think I saw, is yours like one big image? Yeah, yeah, I put it as my cover photo on Facebook. And, okay, yeah, uh, I did see that. Yeah. That would be useful to get. There's a lot of stuff we got to do. Like, I want to take some new photo, like band promo yeah, photos and right. write a new bio and new music. And there's, like, all these things all the time. I'm mm-hmm. like, there's only so much time, but I do want to get to all of it, you know. So I'm hoping this year was it's going to be very productive, Yeah, you know. Just gotta make time for it, but also don't like stress out too much about it all. Yeah, you know? and don't stress other people about it out about it too. You know, it's like I do stuff by myself, but it's like I feel bad sometimes from like, oh, dude, could you like make another flyer or like could you do this or that for me? It's like mm. you know, because I have like a good amount of people that helps me with that stuff, but like I don't want to like be a burden to them. You sure. Know? But Andrew, he's <laughs> for the flyer. Yeah, yeah dude, I, I'm always hitting him yeah. up for a flyer. Cause I had a so call good. with him the other way. I know, I know. He's great, man. He's like, yeah, I don't, but I'll I'll do it for Luke because I fucking love it. I love him so much. But <laughs> that's hilarious, man. Yeah, <laughs> he'll always be bothering me for a flyer. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious, yeah, he, man. Shout always, out, Andrew. Did you do? Yeah, shout out Hong Kong. Co- you got to get him on the podcast, man. Yeah, dude, that would be cool. Yeah. That'd be cool. Get a comedian on. Yeah, he's a fun guy. Totally, man. I love him to totally. death. Totally. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I definitely don't want to, like, only do musicians, you know. Somewhat, like, who I only know yeah, right. <laughs> right now who are, like, willing to come on the podcast. Sure. But, I mean, yeah, I comedian like would be sweet. You could hit up some, like, Milwaukee artists or, like, visual artists or, like, comedians. Mm-hmm. I feel like they'd all be down. You yeah, know, just, like, oh, totally. Mm-hmm. I think it's a matter of also, like, right now, like, getting people on in my immediate circle. Yeah. And then there's just something about where, like, I would love, I, lo- I love having more people on that I know rather than anyone I don't know right now, just cause it's like my house and like, it's yeah. just like a, it takes a lot of energy in myself to really like meet someone new and try to totally. like, if I don't know what I'm getting into, or like mm-hmm. who it is, I going in blind eye kind of stresses me out a little bit. So totally. especially if you're doing it like frequently, Mm-hmm. you know what i mean like it's kind of just like weighing on your shoulders if you're like oh i gotta meet four new people this month right you yeah I mean? straight up and have a, <laughs> at least an hour conversation with yeah them. right but no it's all good I'll get, we'll get there yeah having andrew on would be sweet yeah man did you do that yeah you did that was uh that tiktok that you hmm? uh that tiktok that you did with andrew dressed up as uh oh the minion the minion yeah <laughs> That was technically my first show of the year because oh, sure, that yeah. was that was before our first show, and he wanted me to play some guitar over his like stand up bits, and yep. that sh- that was so funny, man. <laughs> I didn't have like any direction either. He was kind of like, "All right, I'm just gonna play some uh, some chords in like a Midwest emo tuning and hope it goes well." And yeah, it was a lot of fun, man. People loved it. Is it 
he was pretty Sunday out there. Man, man, fuck my mom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bernie Sanders, fuck my dad. Bernie That's Sanders our hit single. Dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we played that one on Brady too. We got like twenty yeah, people. Dude. There was like twenty people congregated around wow. us just chanting. What about at Walgreens, right? Yeah, man. What buskin? Yeah. I want to go buskin. That sounds oh, so fun. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Did you just go out one night? Yeah, Random we were thing. actually hanging out on the stoop of North Warren. Yeah, after yeah. Did you a live show. right over there. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, we did that. And then we were walking home after Walgreens, and we were still like walking down the street singing it. And like some <laughs> dude like threatened to kill us, dude. Holy shit! Like not even like joking. Holy like, shit! He was like in a rage. Like I think he was on drugs or something. Yeah. <laughs> so we almost died for that song. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> the hit single must live on yeah so uh <laughs> so yeah we should probably just uh release that call it a day <laughs> did you uh like what did you there's probably a pretty some pretty loose rules with busking on brady street i bet you could just do it i think i mean i think especially if you don't have like a guitar case open that says tips like if mm. you just want to go there and play like they don't do shit right true. you know you're i don't know what money. the rules are like if you're actually trying to make money um but i've seen some people do it with uh like uh there's a dude with uh some plastic uh garbage uh bins i guess and mm. does like this drumming thing I think it does it along to like songs with the speaker. Yeah. I've always seen him there pretty frequently over the summer. Yeah. There used to be a crew by the corner of Walgreens too. They had like guitars. I think oh, one shit. of them had like a little tiny practice amp too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I don't know where they went. I remember I didn't seeing see this one like... artist like on the backside of Walgreens kind of facing Qdoba maybe. Mm. Um, This one, I think it was a two piece, maybe Cajon and drums. Or cajon and guitar with uh the dude singing through a PA system too. Oh it's really? Like, Holy shit! Yeah, that's and, cool. Uh, it was really sweet. Brady's such an interesting place. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> Once it's like all pedestrian, I think it'll be pretty sweet. It yeah. is pretty sweet already, mm-hmm. but dude, Brady Street during the day. Yeah, it's so weird. <laughs> it's it is so weird. It feels like a ghost town. Like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, then you just like strange. get home from work, and you're trying to get home. And then it's just like people everywhere. Yeah. Can't, like man. turn. <laughs> when I was driving boss, it was always such a bummer to pick, <laughs> to pick people up on Brady. Cause it's just like, Oh my God, Stop like, and go. what's going to happen? Like yeah. finding a spot to pull over. Mm-hmm. is so stressful. <laughs> yeah, you know, that those people will just be hammered. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it is interesting going back to Brady street. Um, like, now that we're older too, mm-hmm. like the scene there, the crowd gets younger and younger. Yeah. It's like, Whoa. Yeah, dude, it's weird. What the man. fuck? <laughs> we're getting it's old. Weird. It's weird being 24. Yeah. And, like, and then you like go to a show and you're like talking to somebody that's like they can't even buy a beer yet. And it's, right. It's like, oh, you're 20. Yeah. <laughs> that's weird. Like, hey, damn. That when I was 20, that felt years ago yeah. <laughs> ages ago i will say it's way it's a lot nicer because i'm back in the east side now but i live farther than uh warren i live on maryland now sort of yeah, by yeah. like whole foods and <laughs> my oh, yeah. address is yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, if you want to say hi <laughs> <laughs> um no but it's nicer like to be away from because like before on warren like I was like two houses down from that Walgreens on Brady. So like, Oh sure. It was loud. Yeah. And like crazy people. We'd get like people like just chilling on our porch at night. Right. Dude. And like, I had to have to tell people like, all right, you got to go. Oh like, dude. This is my house. <laughs> <laughs> Spooky. Yeah. <laughs> it's just drunk people though. But now no longer. Yeah, now Maryland it's, is pretty busy of a street though. Still, I'd it say. is, it is. But we're in a pretty big like apartment unit, so it's like okay. pretty like the the apartment unit itself is pretty quiet and tame. Did yeah. you ever find a spot to practice in? I remember you were looking. Yeah, yeah, we did. So um, we were practicing in this a friend of ours basement in Bayview, um, and it was not great. It was mm. like a because Rev Pop is no longer. No, that's not that where was we practice. Like the sickest setup, I dude. Know, dude. You all were spoiled with that. We were. <laughs> we really were. That's, Damn. The, that's the coolest spot. Yeah. But uh, 
the spot we got after that was this dingy, dingy, old, nasty basement. Damn. So loud and like yeah. you get dusty just practicing. Yeah. We had a microphone um <laughs> tied to a lamp with a like a old um rope. Cause we like, didn't have a mic stand. They didn't, didn't have a mic stand, ah! and like every practice, I'm like, I'm not gonna bring a mic stand because I gotta bring my amp, guitar, pedals, like all oh the shit. Oh my god, we're just gonna make it work. <laughs> so we had like that going through like a little practice amp, and it was just, uh-huh. it was bad. But uh, now we gotta, we do have a spot. My my buddy that I work with actually, um, he used to be the like the project manager at Turner Hall. Um, and um he does like freelancing work for like okay. av now and so i see him sometimes and he's like a musician too he's in um a couple of milwaukee bands but uh anyways like he has like a finished basement with like a recording setup and a pa and it's nice. really like ideal you know nice so that's good it's a little out of the way but like not it's not too bad yeah and it's totally worth it for what we're getting you know do you pay like monthly for that at all or? yeah we throw them we throw them some cash usually monthly yeah but it it really depends um you know on how many weeks during the month we practice yeah Cause like sometimes we'll miss like a wednesday or whatever yeah but um how many days a week do you usually get together then typically we practice on wednesdays okay um that's been kind of difficult with like the holidays and yeah just being so busy and stuff but we try to do wednesdays or just once a week Mm -hmm. you know so yeah i think it works out well that way so tough finding practice space in milwaukee honey creek just hit me up trying to find a new space yeah and the spot we're in right now is um I just forwarded because we're not like the main people on the lease, mm-hmm. but we share it with a few different bands. And apparently, the wait list to get one of those spots is pretty high. I bet. Yeah. Do you guys practice like once a week? Or? Yeah, every Tuesday. Mm. Tuesdays we do. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you got a show on. When is that uh, Anodyne show? That is next Friday. Next Friday. So the seventeenth. Uh Friday, Feb tenth. Feb tenth. Yeah. It was my half birthday. Oh yeah? What are you twenty four? Twenty four. Okay. Yeah. I'm also twenty four. I'll be half twenty four and a half. Twenty four point five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe we'll cover that. Anodyne's a chill venue. Yeah. I think that'll be a that'll be a fun one. We just got Ratio Curtis is so good, dude. I know, man. They're gonna play their first album in its entirety because it's five so, years old. Wait, is that the? It's gotta be the one with like the red balloon on there. I think it's it's called How Are You. Versio. So I honestly didn't really listen to their last newer album. Oh yeah, the one with On Sunday. On Sunday, your favorite song. Yeah, these songs are fire. Yup. Yeah, man. Oh, it's fucking go, dude. Strange Land, this song is so good. Yeah, man. Your favorite your favorite song, I love that one. Oh dude, I gotta add these to my playlist. Dude, they're new or I shouldn't say new anymore, but quit. That album is so good. Is too. it good, mm-hmm. dude? Damn, I, I should probably listen to it. I've been so bad at listening to new music lately. Yeah. It's tough. Spotify Maybe. makes it tough because they're like, Oh, do you want to listen to all your favorite music that you've heard a million times. They don't really, like, mm. I have a hard time finding new music on Spotify. Yeah. Unless I, like, go out of my way to, like, click on new stuff. Right, right. Because they're always trying to, like, feed me the same. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, totally. Usually I just go, if someone sends me a song, I'll listen to it and add it to my playlist. But I just listen to a whole random, yeah, random hodgepodge of stuff, mm-hmm. which I like, too. Yeah. All right. You want to wrap this up? Sure. I got to go take care of my my girl. Yeah, man. Sounds good. All right. Anything else you want to plug? I don't know. That's about it. Show uh, on February 10th. Yeah. Come to our show. Get a That'd sticker. Be sweet. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any more merch? Uh, we just got some new stickers printed. Oh, I did. Yeah. yeah. You did the PBR yeah, and the cigarettes. PBR yeah. and cigarettes. Uh, <laughs> smokes and a cigarette. Smoke and cig for. Uh, <laughs> 
or how much you sell it for i think i mean these are we typically do for free but these were right. like a little bigger and like a little more expensive to make so we're gonna do like two bucks nice two bucks get a, a smoke and a sig for two bucks yeah That's i gotta i gotta start um uh, I gotta get like a laminated sheet with merch because like I'm still writing the merch. Oh, like, like the prices and stuff. I'm like cardboard. And yeah, stuff. yeah. It's such an easy fix, and I just haven't done it yet. Yeah, but. it is nice. Like once you have <laughs> them, then you can just bring them every time. And yeah, just put them up. But yeah, but, but that's all I got. We got a bunch of shows. We got a bunch of music coming out. Cool. That's about it. Cool, cool. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me, dude. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. I'll do it again. Yeah. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody, and uh, check out North Warren on February 10th and on all streaming platforms and all that good stuff. All right, thanks for watching, y'all. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>